And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Eva Rozier, former hospice nurse and healing arts practitioner who had a near-death experience in the ocean, which today we're going to learn about and more. Eva, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be invited to be on the show. I'm super excited about it. Thank you, and I'm excited to have you. Eva, let's start with your NDE and go from there. Okay, so I was three years old when that happened, and um, I was sitting on the edge of the ocean at the beach in Hawaii, where my dad was stationed uh, in the Army, and um, my aunt happened to be visiting my mom at the time. And so my mom was super attentive, um, uh, kind of OCD with watching over us. But that time she was not. So she said it happened so fast. A big wave came, crashed over me, and I was like whisked out into the ocean <laughs> very fast. And I thought, I remember it very vividly. I, I thought, okay. I want to get in trouble because I'm not supposed to be out here. And I was like, just having fun. I was just like, whoa, I couldn't swim, three years old. And um, then I remember not realizing, oh, you know, that I'm in trouble at all. Like, it didn't even phase me. <laughs> but um, I also remember feeling like I was at one in that peace. And I was just loving it. Honestly, I was out in the ocean. It was beautiful way out there. I was not scared at all. Um, and my mom said that she, she came to get me and she, I was underwater. And then when she got me, uh, she said that I was completely still at peace. Like I didn't cry or anything. She said like, it was nothing even phased me. Um, which I thought was interesting because, um, I recently got her perspective, like perspective of it. And she you know, she was like, it happened so fast. You were underwater and I didn't tell your father <laughs> for a while. He said, I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to, you know, look at me like I was bad or whatever. Um, but my brother was there and he remembers it too. And his perspective is I was sitting, we were both sitting on the edge and he's a little bit older than me. And he said, he just watched me go out before he said anything. So he watched it all happen. He is five years old. I was three. And he said, he finally was like, maybe I should tell my mom um, that Eva's way out there and I don't see her anymore. <laughs> so he's, um, it was so, it's funny like talking about it now, but I never really, I didn't drown. I just had that experience where I could have, um, that I was sucked under and uh, I don't remember ever knowing or feeling like we died like there was no death um even that at, at that age at three um I understood that completely um because we know that death is actually a man-made word and we don't really know you know there's so much well, of course after all the interviews you've done you realize there's so many different things that can happen <laughs> in that, um, you know, we're, we're learning about it. And yeah. Um, so with the near death experience for me, it just looking back, I was three years old, you know, a lot of people don't even remember being three. I do for some reason. I remember, I have a vivid memory of a lot of my childhood. Some people I talked to can't remember when they were seven years old. I, I remember being three and then after that is when everything <laughs> I had all kind of experiences with the spirits and beings and all kind of stuff and we did live on an army base <laughs> in Hawaii um, and I was a sensitive um, child and I'm very, still sensitive hypersensitive to so many not just the senses, but just every, the energies. During your NDE, I understand that you felt peaceful and relaxed. 
Do you feel that anything supernatural happened, like you were out of your body or spirits were around you or anything like that? I do feel like I was out of my body, but I was everything. Like, I, I feel like I was at one with it all. Everything is the only way I can describe it. Um, as far as like seeing anything, I don't remember, you know, going because I did not go unconscious. I just was, oh, I'm underwater. This is, I'm not supposed to be out here. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm supposed to be sitting at the edge and not way out here. This is fun. And I didn't realize, you know, at three, I didn't realize I didn't have a concept of death then and what dying was at all. I really just, you know, had no clue. And we don't until we're, we're kind of taught that we die. We don't, you know, uh, you know, being three years old, you kind of, you're in that certain brainwave state anyway at three years old and I've had a few people I've told that story to and they're like that's why you're like how you are because <laughs> you're stuck in that theta brainwave state a lot I'm like yeah maybe I don't <laughs> I do I do seem to be up here a lot um and which got me in trouble as a kid <laughs> especially in school <laughs> Do you feel that after that experience, your life changed? Well, I was three. So I think after that, I just was, I was always sensitive. And my mom and dad, they both have told me, even as a little infant, I was kind of spiritual. They could tell. I started walking when I was eight years old, eight months old, not eight years old, um, and talking really early and just kind of, this the both would say like this angelic type energy um and which you know coming into the world um I even when I was little I felt the density on this planet the weight of earth um never really resonated with me all the way through my childhood that there would be times where I would ask my dad when am I when are we going home He's like, no, you're home. And I like, know, I mean, my home, home, like where home is, like, it's not somewhere physical. <laughs> it's, I guess it's the essence. Now it goes back to our essence. Do you think that you were born this way spiritually? Or do you think the NDE was like a catalyst that had you cross the veil that kind of, you know, started this all off or possibly took you to the next level? that maybe I I was born this way but that experience maybe unlocked something within like you know we we all have things inside of us and gifts inside of us and it takes unlocking the codes like our DNA is a code um so unlocking it um but I do you know I was very just kind of go with the flow I I, well, I still go with the flow but like when I was little um kind of not awakened I was kind of just what I say way up here it's like always just floaty feeling like it's the only way I can describe it it's not like I was really grounded um it, it, it took a lot for me to learn how to ground myself um living up in the the third eye <laughs> in the crown chakra areas up here in these energy areas up here a lot when I was little um and uh, I would always have a pencil <laughs> and grounding myself by like putting the pencil to the paper uh, in in school and um even now I'm you know putting pencil to paper is something that helps me ground in some way um I write really fast it's like I'm I'm, I'm open, like I'm more open to these energies to come through. And I don't really know if it's from that experience when I was three or if that just kind of unlocked something that was already there. Um, and then there's more things that continued to unlock <laughs> as I started waking up. We say waking up. I don't know if we're really ever asleep. I think it's just 
the codes. So let's fast forward in your life. How did you become a hospice nurse? So I graduated nursing school when I was 20 years old. And by the time I was 22, 23, I was traveling all around Jacksonville, Florida, <laughs> working as an end of the life, end of life nurse, going into people's homes at that young of age. And, um, but my very first patient when I was 18 in nursing school had died while I held her hand. My very first patient, my very first time in the hospital. I held her hand as she took her last breath and flew with the angels um, uh, with her daughter at the bedside, her daughter telling her mama fly with the angels. And um, this is something that kind of was a catalyst for me working with hospice. It's almost like that was a given, Hey, this is what, this is your gifts. And then after that, I worked and I did the hospice thing. And I also worked in, um, the oncology, the cancer at a very young age, working with cancer patients, seeing a whole lot and holding hands of hundreds of people um, that passed over by the time I was in my mid twenties. I did, <laughs> I mean, that was like something I just, I did, it was a gift and I actually um, embrace it. I embrace being able to be that person for the families and um, seeing the stuff and learning what I did learn, um, which is some eye-opening things. Working as a hospice nurse, you see stuff that not everybody, you know, gets to see. Like, like what? The, well, somebody taking their last breath. Things can happen. Um, this is a story that I tell a lot of people whenever I talk about it. Um, I was about twenty-three. And I was in a patient's home and she, she was bed bound and nonverbal for about two months before this happened. And the moment she was taken, she took her last breath. Um, this elderly woman with her, with family all around, there was like 10 people all you know, praying. She was doing the end of life breathing and she took her last breath, held her hands up and called her husband's name that had passed away a year. I got a year before she called his name out. So she spoke clearly his name as she took her last breath. And as many times as I've told that story, I personally still get chills telling that story because that was a, a moment in time that I was like, wow, I just saw something that happened. That was, you know, it kind of just, there's no question. We don't die. We, we are energy and energy does not die we it goes into another form we transform um so there, there's a lot that you know working in a in hospice working at a very young age in my 20s it kind of set me up for other codes <laughs> to open and um which they were already there though i, I believe um i was i was kind of born for you, this type of line of work. Do you feel like you have ever witnessed a person's spirit leave their body? Like, have you seen a mist or anything like that come out of their body? Uh, yeah. So I, I've, I can see, um, there, if I get these intuitive nudges, when, even if a patient's end of life, you never know when it's going to be. But I've got, I get the nudges, okay, it's going to be um, very soon. And then I can look at their aura and it just, it looks different. It kind of hovers above their body instead of closer to their body. It's kind of hovering. And the only way I can describe it is like, um, like you, you're seeing little sparks of energy, but you know, I have done this for, I did this for years and I'm also, I'm, I'm open to see this stuff. I, I believe everybody can see these things, but um, yeah, if somebody asked me and they're like, huh, what? I'm like, yeah, you, you, 
you can see their aura hover them when they're about to transition within 24 hours or so. Um, it could be 30 minutes, but it could be within 12 to 24 hours. I've noticed that sometimes it's even two days, they're kind of just hovering there. Have you ever had a shared death experience with any of your patients where they kind of brought you along to the other side? I never had a shared death. Um, so I, I don't know if I've ever heard of anybody that really experienced that either. I don't, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot that I'm still continuing to learn always about, about all of this. Um, but definitely I think it could happen. Has any of your former patients ever contacted you from the other side, like in a dream or during meditation? Yeah. Um, my most recent was in Maine. Whenever I was up in Maine as a travel nurse, I, I, I kind of volunteer. If there's a patient that's dying actively, I'm like, give them to me. Because <laughs> I, I enjoy being there for the family and I kind of know how to talk because I've done it for years know how to talk um and discuss certain things just to help um the transition but um the patient died he and he he struggled for a while and that night I came home and he came to me in my dream but this is the security camera this is where the security camera comes up <laughs> There's a reason I had a security camera on me and it shows a big mist hovering over me that night. Um, and and there's a whole reason why I had the security cameras to begin with. <laughs> um, I opened the Healing Art Studio and got um, security cameras for the studio. And uh, setting them up, I noticed I was, I just was kind of playing with the cameras and I noticed these orbs and stuff flying around me when I was meditating or in this meditative state and, or doing my, um, just my little energy flow. I just, just feeling energies and bringing them in, just moving and pulling energies around me and knowing that they do exist. Um, so the cameras were showing these little balls angels whatever you want to call them come in around me um and as far as like that night with the guy in Maine it did pick up a pretty big um orb hovering not just floating but it hovered and then left but when I woke up I I kind of tagged the camera to, to be able to go back and look to see if I could see anything on the camera and I definitely did uh, it was, but he just get they just come and um, that was one time. Uh, so they he I don't even know if he gave me a message or what. I don't know if he was coming to me just to I, I really don't understand why he came, but maybe just to tell me thank you because um, I did help his significant other out you know, through because she was having a tough time with the death. And so I don't know. I don't know. When you're speaking to the family, do you tell them, you know, people don't die, they just, you know, transition to somewhere else? Or what are those conversations like? I um, I use discernment. I use my, you know, okay, should I tell talk to this patient's family about this or not? Um, sometimes it does come up and um it helps. It just depends on their beliefs. And of course, I don't want to push my own understanding of you know, things onto anybody else. But I do think it, it, you know, the stories, I can tell them the stories, like the one that I told her earlier about the lady that was nonverbal and not moving at all for two months. And then the minute she took her last breath, she raised her hand and calls her husband's name out. And, you know, that, that's just one instance. That's just one out of hundreds. So um, <laughs> as far as like the, you know, spirits coming to me, I've had multiple times where spirits come to me and they come to me in the in-between wake and sleep state. 
So I'm not necessarily dreaming or sleep. I'm in my bed, but I'm in that like theta brainwave state where it's almost like not sleep paralysis because I've kind of taught myself how to get out of that state because the sleep paralysis ha happened to me since I was little. Um, and that's terrifying when it happens. So I learned things that to do um, to, to break it, which is tough to do. It's challenging um, for a lot of people that do it. They have experienced the sleep paralysis state to break it. There are some, you have to kind of create your own thing though, I believe, to be able to really um, get out of it. But, and um, as far as that goes, there's, there's, and that opens all kinds of doors when you're able to break that sleep paralysis state too. Was it very common for you to see people that they would just start talking to other family members that weren't there? Oh yeah. Uh, that happens often. <laughs> um, I would say regularly, um, when patients are, you know, very sick and they're like mama's home or, um, I see my, my wife that's passed away years ago. She, she's sitting over there and yeah, I, I mean, you see that all the time and, um, that's very common and, you know, and people don't even think, oh, they think that they're just delusional well, you really don't know. That's the truth. Like there's so much that we don't know. And there's so much I don't, I don't know really. Like I'm learning, but I, and we can never say definitive that's one thing or the other because we're all kind of, you know, learning here. I do believe earth is a school for us to learn and grow and expand in our consciousness and our awareness on things. And, you know, this is my understanding. <laughs> All right, you have some videos of those orbs. So let's take a look at them. Okay. I was, I've done all these experience, experiments, experiments with the camera. And because, I, you know, once I learned I could see these orbs and stuff coming in, I'm like, I'm going to do it every time to debunk myself. So here I am just playing around and I like to see the orbs on the camera. I I can see them some with the naked eye. Other people have asked me. And yes, I can, but they show up differently on the camera. They're sometimes really big balls of light, um, you know, and also you notice that they kind of come around me and like scan me. And that happens every single time I do this. Like, um, and there's a piece of uh, this, this is, these are two different videos, two different times, me just playing around with the security camera. And um, you'll see, you know, I'm call, I am calling in my angels, calling in my spirit guides, calling in my soul family, calling on love and light. And I'm getting really into my heart space when I do this. Um, and basically, I was making the videos to debunk myself. <laughs> But then it happened every single time and I could do it every single time. And people are like, oh, it's dust. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if dust quite moves like that. Yeah, I don't think it's dust because it looks like it's just one orb flying around. Mm -hmm. And I have seen it. I've seen different things on the cameras. Um, if I'm having, which I don't keep the camera on me all the time. When people ask that, I'm like, no, I'm just playing around with the camera right here. And, but I have had the camera on me when I slept. And if I have a dream um, of ET or interdimensionals coming, which I have had those dreams, you'll see the orbs. And sometimes it's multiple orbs, like rushing in the energy. And, and I, would, I would feel like the energy and like my ear would pop. And I would wake up and look at the camera and there's all these orbs around me like there. Oh, there's some kind of energy something going on there. All right. So here I'm just having fun, make, experimenting with the security camera. Once I discovered you can pick up all this stuff. I mean, why not play with it and see how I, I was doing it to debunk myself. And it's just, it's interesting to see this stuff 
on the infrared cameras. I wish more people would do experiments and I, I would love to be, if anybody out there wants to do an experiment and use me, <laughs> I would love to be a part of it. Um, so um, I'm just gonna push, you want me to go ahead and play the, play the video? Sure. see the energy just kind of coming around my hands and out and flying <laughs> yeah i saw that one come out of your hands so you're trying to what put your consciousness into your hands or just have energy in your hands and this and is this is just it playing with the energy in my hands and use it and also um i'm calling on love and light and like healing energies and earth energies the energies of the earth that are you know all around us and kind of trying to condense them making a the energy ball in my hand um which you know is like qigong tai chi you know teaches um which i have studied before but i'm more of the yo the yogi you know registered yoga instructor with 500 hours and that you know when you practice yoga you do open yourself up for energy flowing through your body in a different way um you're you're basically a portal for energy <laughs> and our hands are very powerful for to manipulate this energy and you can you can actually gather it up and play with it like it's a play-doh ball but it's energy <laughs> it also looks like there's an orb flying around yeah there is yeah and and I have um, video, uh, pictures of me um, from back from when I was a teenager, like just the old way of taking pictures, not digital, but even digitals would pick it up. But I have orbs around me a lot in the pictures. And I was pointing that out to somebody that, wow, there's several pictures of you with like just an orb ball kind of in your, like in my auric field. Um, mm inter it's interesting all of it well thank you for sharing that on this video uh is another security camera experiment um and i was playing with I, I was in a deep meditative state before i set the security camera up i had been meditating a while which, which it doesn't really take me long to kind of get into this zero point state anymore like it I've been meditating for a while and in this video I was um, playing with the consciousness and placing my consciousness like I, I, I've learned to kind of pop out of my body <laughs> anyway I wanted to do I wanted to see what would happen if I placed my consciousness above that statue that's on the top of the um, tower that you see um, mm -hmm. and at the very top and I was shocked whenever I watched the video back because you can see an orb come off of that area. And all I was doing was just placing my consciousness there. Like I was, like I physically was on top of that statue. That's, that's the only way I can describe what placing your consciousness somewhere else is. And we do it all the time, but um, this is just an experiment that I was doing. All right, that sounds okay. cool. Let's see it. You'll, you'll see orbs in this one too. See, just see it come mm -hmm. off the very top. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I was meditating for a while before I was able to do that. So, um, I was, <laughs> I guess you can edit it, but I, I think I did it, looped it where you can see it twice on here. So here it goes. All right, well, let's bring you back now. So if someone else wanted to try this, what kind of security camera are you using? I just bought one off of Amazon that was like a $30, $40 camera. Um, and it has like the app that you put on your phone. Um, and you can look at, 
I mainly got the cameras for my studio, which I ended up closing my studio and um, I got overwhelmed, honestly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I bought them all for the studio, but then I had these security cameras left over and I'm like, I'm just going to play with them and see this infrared light, um, what it can pick up when these things happen. Um, so I started setting them up too whenever I was doing the energy healings um, on my clients that would come and you I would pick up things too. <laughs> of course, the balls coming in, the energy coming in. And also you can see like if I would feel sense a pocket of heat is how I describe where a lot my clients when they come to see me, I tell them don't really tell me a whole lot like I want to see I also like to experiment and learn and grow and um see if I can pick up without them telling me what it is that's going on with them and a lot of times I'll sense these heat pockets but I'll and I'll clear the energy and you can see balls like lick out of their body <laughs> I don't I mean I don't know I don't I've never, it's just, and they're, they're shocked. They're like, wow, I sense something happening during that time. I was seeing smoke or colors or whatever during that. Uh, what do they report about how they're feeling afterwards? Feeling after the energy healing? Mm -hmm. Everybody experiences something completely different. Um, a lot of people do get the tingly, um, seeing colors. Uh, a lot of people see colors, especially if they're not somebody that meditates at all and they see something like that. It really opens their eyes into what, 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 what is that? Why am I seeing these colors of purple and blues? And a lot of people see the purples, um, which I see a lot too. Never. I have, I have synesthesia. Do you know what synesthesia is? I knew the definition of it or at one time, but it's something about touch, isn't it? Well, it could be different, all kinds of different, um, different things. But mine is where I see like with music, I see like colors, sound of colors and pulses and flashes of and also it gets it can get really detailed um, when I'm meditating with the synesthesia I can see almost I call them machines I don't know what they are it's just patterns of intricate things in like 3d form uh, more so than a computer can create like that's how detailed it is um little synesthesia stuff going on <laughs> I've, I've, I've met a few other people that have it and and everybody's a little bit different but similar I'm um, seeing the colors and stuff um it can be all different different things too but mine is from like seeing sound um and being able to visualize this whenever i get into this meditative state get into like this very high uh hyper um visualization mode <laughs> where i can it's almost like i'm looking at a video game more detailed than a video game like a, it's like i'm i'm there in it in that zero point of consciousness and i can see like the tunnel and and try to go through the tunnel but the tunnel keeps going and going and going sometimes <laughs> and i have astral projected people ask me that the astral projection um you know all these definitions we we really just don't understand what's going on sometimes um, one of the weirdest things that's happened to me was uh, um, about a year ago, uh, doing a lot of yoga, uh, teaching a lot of yoga, lots of meditation. And one night in my in-between sleep and awake state, um, I astral projected, this is a, a description of my consciousness leaving somewhere out of the solar system. I was basically sucked in this like tunnel of light. And, uh, up into a star system which I didn't know about was Zeta Reticuli and they showed me it well they I don't know what it was my, like it was like a I got a map of what it was I looked it up whenever I woke up to 
to see what was this, like what the heck just happened. But I was getting sucked into a ship. On and but because I'm very conscious, um, I've learned how to become very conscious and lucid in all throughout all these experiences. I I thought just before I was going onto the ship, I and mean, it happened so fast, you're sucked up in there. Um, I was like, well. I, I don't want to just pop in there and scare them. So I can't, I wasn't invited. Um, this is not my free will. And this goes back to the free will thing with this too. Um, so I popped right back into my body. And then I was like, Whoa, what just happened? I almost got, I was like so close to going in a ship and out in this somewhere, say the reticular system. And um <clears throat> So when I popped back in my body, it took me a little while to fall back asleep. But once I fell back asleep, it happened again. I had this buzzing, popping, and then some beings, which I telepathically told them I did not want to see them. And I asked if they were nice. And if they were nice, they had to give me a sound of a Tibetan bowl, um, which I heard. And they scanned me. I don't know. They were over me, like just scanning me. And then they popped away. I don't, they went away. And then I woke up because I was in that sleep, in between sleep awake state again, the sleep paralysis state, but I wasn't paralyzed. I've learned to be kind of controlled in that state over the years. So um, yeah, that was one of the weird things that happened to me in the past, in the past year or so. Um, on to, uh, a, lot, a lot of things have happened though. <laughs> That's just one, one of them. Earlier, you mentioned interdimensionals. Are those the same things as ETs to you, or is that something different? Well, I mean, so we give things labels to kind of give a definition or describe what they are. So the truth is, I really, you know, as far as it being something physical, it's something physical that I see that's not in this 3d world this 3d realm so um what do you mean that yeah. you see them physically are you mean do you see them here with your own eyes well it's always in that in between sleep and awake state mm -hmm. um the i've had the uh, blue orb this is i've had orbs float in that i've seen in that state and it'd be like i'd say maybe et related interdimensional being related um, these interdimensional beings do exist for real. And um, yeah, <laughs> they, I've, I've seen um, the blue AV, a blue being, I don't know what you want to call it, a blue being of some sort came to me twice. Um, a deer, this is in 2019. Um, the blue being was, I uh, had like hieroglyph, all over, hieroglyphs all over it. It was very interesting looking and it gave me like a telepathic download message. Um, but a blue actual blue orb floated into my bedroom. Um, and I'm in this what this sleep wake. So I'm in my actual bedroom seeing it, but I'm asleep, but I'm not asleep. So the, that's that's what I mean by interdimensional because it's kind of in that. Uh, I mean, I'm still learning. I, you know, it's in that state where we really you know I want to I want to learn more about it I want to be a part of experiments and I, I think that um like Robert Monroe and the Monroe Institute he did a lot um to bring people's awareness a lot of experiments I think that's amazing that he did something like that what was the message that you got um I it, it had to do with um, learning how to be, because we are human beings. Um, it had a lot to do with um, consciousness and love and connecting with your heart space and more and just being, knowing that we're all connected, not just, you know, on this realm, but connected through all the realms, like everybody and everything the interdimensionals and they're they're all made from source realm the source energy which you know brings life to your atoms in your body is this the atoms are not you know all physical it's only what 99.9999999 99, 99, 99, 
percent space and um you know there's a lot we we don't know or maybe some things that we do know that we're not being told as far as the technologies and um we can go down rabbit holes talking about that <laughs> have you seen ufos um i i well i've seen a lot i see i call them orbs they pulse me like they come in um i can do the contact method which i've you hear the ce5 contact and there's certain ways to do it um which i believe that you can kind of create your own way and i have um if you understand that the ether or the matrix is a biological type of internet so the internet is our artificial intelligence when people are scared of the artificial intelligence you know the internet actually is artificial intelligence itself people don't get that but yes it is so but there is this biological intelligence which is you know the ether <laughs> and you can you can use your mind and your heart to have contact with these other realms it's not just with interdimensional like ets it's other things like fairies and angels and jesus <laughs> or buddha which i've seen lao tzu um the Tao. I've, I've had him come through i've had buddha come through i've had jesus come through um in this state when you're in this state is it usually in the morning before you wake up like it's four or five in the morning and you're about to get up but it's kind of a little bit early or is it like do you wake up in the middle of the night or is it just before you go to bed? It used to be just before I went to sleep. Whenever I was little, um, it happened a lot just as I was trying to fall asleep, um, which I learned how to control a lot of it. So um, it just depends now as an adult because my schedule is so crazy. Sometimes I do work night shift as a nurse. It throws that off. So um it's it's not really consistent honestly it's not um the three o'clock hour is there significance to that when it whenever I, I am on the normal time clock of everybody else and i, ha I think it has to do I, I mean there's so much we don't know but i think it has to do with the consciousness of everybody else too think about all the other people around you that are sleeping at that hour and what they're they're doing where they are where's their consciousness going I've never heard anybody say that the actual internet itself is AI. I think that's an interesting perspective. How did you come up with that? Well, I mean, it's, it's a artificial web of um, knowledge and connections. It's something outside of yourself. It's not, it's man-made. Do you feel like the web itself is becoming aware like aware of itself or at least aware of the earth? Um, there's algorithms, so uh, as or ag algorithms awareness. Uh, I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. think so. It's, it's not aware of itself, but I'm sure that other people have noticed, like when they think about something or, and it's not, it's not even, talking about it anymore when you think about it it's popping up in your feed like there's no way like okay let's say i think about i want to buy a new guitar and i just think it and i think about a guitar i never thought about before and it pops up in my feed somehow and I'm like, I, how did that happen yeah that's interesting what about the either matrix do you feel that that type of matrix is created by all of us collectively by source or by ets honestly there's so much we don't know and i think that um it could be a simulation you know we do live in a holographic universe and everything is inside of everything and you can never really get an answer to anything because there's always going to be a question with inside of an answer um so we we live in this holographic universe It's a holograph. We do know that by the fractals and the way things are made of and like the way you make a mountain, 
whenever you're building it digitally, it's all made from fractals and to make that mountain image. Well, same, same as on earth, like everything goes by that sacred geometry, that golden ratio, the fractals, that fractals make up our, our world that we see around us. Um, and, and we're definitely, we're not, we're not just um, physical beings like we are way more than just the physical for sure at this point in your life where is your spiritual path leading you about three or four months ago i had this long prayer um and i prayed and i asked the universe and god for upgrade <laughs> and the next day i um i got on and I, these different ways of, I was learning, I wanted to learn how to make my own music so I can record my own guided meditations and hypnosis sessions and inductions. And I, within a day or two, I would, just, all this music was coming through me. I was able to like produce this music and publish this music and make it all myself, which is all self-taught. And I, I so I published three albums working I mean in multiple singles and within just a few months and um cool. I really yeah I really enjoy um doing it as something that's flowing through me um um you know learning more and more about it um and also doing the energy healing yeah you know, always I'm always here for that if anybody um you know is looking for something that you know they haven't quite tried yet the energy healing definitely it works I've seen you know so many people change afterwards um just one session even <laughs> it's it kind of opens your mind up a little bit when you're seeing these colors and sensations that you know like, wow what's happening in my body <laughs> What's the best way to reach out to you? You can find me on, I have a website that's called newearthhealer.com. Um, well, I have my phone number on there. You can feel free to text me if you want to. I'm very open. Um, you can email me, text me, you know, any way if you, you know, want to reach out, especially anybody that wants to do experiments. <laughs> if somebody wants to experience some of the same things you have, what is the best way for them to do that? Just know that you're playing, okay? So don't take everything so seriously. Don't expect anything to be any certain way. Just kind of play. Really tap into your heart space, into that space of, um, it's kind of like going back to that inner child space. And not all children had a good childhood, and um, I, I personally went through some major things as a child. So I'm not saying like going back to memories of being a child. I'm just saying that, that heart space as a child, the adventure and the awe, oh, everything's so new. That type of energy, just bringing that into your body does connect you with your heart. So are you saying like, besides being childlike and taking it easy, start meditating or something else oh yeah yeah meditating um meditating or and you can start off with just a few seconds uh, some of my friends ask you know how how to meditate a lot of people don't know still and it's so important because it kind of it resets your brain like it resets your energy um it's, sometimes it's better than sleep really for your body um but definitely meditate more <laughs> Uh, this, uh, meditate <laughs> it's really really good for our bodies um which it, you know you can take you can do it in different ways you don't have to sit there you can listen to guided meditations you could paint to meditate some people meditate while they're driving um and that's okay just getting just taking time to kind of get um away from yourself kind of move yourself out of the way and just be instead of do but I guess if you're driving, you don't want to do the meditation where you're closing your eyes. Right. Now, yeah, if you're driving, you don't want to listen to my voice, especially. 
could say I, I've had people like whoa I've had to pull over when that came on because I, I was like got so sleepy I'm like yeah you're you're not supposed to listen to a hypnosis when no. you're driving <laughs> well Eva before we finish up can you give us one last positive message just be be happy and be where you are if you're if you're sad if you're having emotions an emotional day just allow it to flow through you don't block it you know i think it's good to cry <laughs> um know also that we do not die that we are made of energy and we this energy that we have you know moves form we we our spirit is a moving spirit we do transform which trans means rise above and form of course is solid form so we we transform into some other existence or realm we we do not die period i, I know that with 110 percent. eva thank you for that message and thank you for being my guest thank you jeff it was a pleasure namaste <laughs> the pleasure was all mine thanks for watching the jeff mara podcast I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.